Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Batteries Included podcast. I'm Dominic Yoni, and my co-hosts today are Tom Logney, senior editor at Inside EVs and host of the YouTube channel State of Charge, along with Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Studios. And today we're doing a special episode on this little adventure they had last weekend. We they call it the, the race to Florida. So basically, the background is the setup to this is so last week. Ford, which was the first to uh, open up or to, to make an alliance with Tesla to use their supercharger network and also a NAX adapter, their standard plug-in DC adapter. I guess on Tesla, it's AC and DC. Uh, so they were the first to do it. So they got the first access to the supercharger network. And Kyle here was the first person to actually use the... Uh, the, they have an adapter to use for, go for, to go from the uh, Ford F-150 Lightning, which he had to plug into the Tesla supercharger and plug in. And you were like the first to plug up and try this new interface. And uh, that's all pretty exciting. But, you know, that's just that's uh, something that, uh, it's like a momentous occasion. OK, so we need a, a moment, a momentous, I don't know, something to kick off this momentous change. That sounds crazy. but. But that's not nearly as crazy as what y'all did. So I know, set up Tom, what y'all did, did, do. So what we did, do, did, do was Kyle calls me up, uh, uh, you know, last week when we're organizing, doing these plugins and being the first people to use the network and so forth. Because Ford contacted us a week ahead of time and said, look, we're going to have these adapters. We're going to only a few hand handpicked people. We're going to choose. We're going to give you the adapter. You can charge. You can make content. So Kyle flew into New Jersey. I live in New Jersey already, and it was uh, very close to where I live, actually. And uh, so Kyle's like, well, I'm going to be in New Jersey. Ford has given me an F-150 Lightning uh, so I can charge it and make my videos. But I'm going to ask them if I could keep it for, like, longer. And do you want to race me to Florida? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think I agreed pretty quickly and was like, yeah, we, we could do that. You know what I mean? So me and my lightning, him and his lightning, same truck, same spec, Lariat, same size tires. Although I had my winter, my BF Goodrich KO2s on and Kyle's like, you got to take those off. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not racing you to Florida with KO2s on, you know, I'd, I'd be in Georgia and you'd be there. Um, cause they do make a, a difference. I think I, I did some range testing. I was 10, 15% difference. You lose with those big, you know, hulking heavy tires. So, um, so yeah, so we set it up and, but here was the premise on the way down, Kyle, well, actually at first he was like, one of us will use the supercharger. One of us will use CCS chargers. And we, we didn't discuss who was going to use, who was going to do well, but I know Kyle wanted to use the, the Tesla uh, adapter and charge on Tesla. So the next time we talked, I'm like, you use the supercharger network. I'll go with boring CCS and, um, and, and, and we'll do that. And, uh, you know, we'll basically, we'll set a speed limit. We can only go 10 over. We'll leave from my house in Northern New Jersey. We'll pick a, a destination that's exactly a thousand miles away. Um, we originally were going to go to the Daytona International Speedway and we were going to call this like the race to Daytona. But uh, I think like a couple hours into the race, we had some followers were like, hey guys, you know, it's biker week in Daytona. Oh, no. and there's probably going to be thousands of bikers at the Daytona Speedway. And so we're like, yeah, it's probably not a good ending point. So then they, they Dave and uh, Kyle, because Dave's, uh, Dave, uh, out of spec Dave, Kyle's dad was driving with him, was like, let's meet at Bucky's, uh, which is like some, you know, crazy ass, you know, gas Monster place with stop. food. Monster trucks up. And I, uh, because, and I had no idea what it was. And that plays into how things unfolded. I swear to God, I thought it was like a Sheets. I thought we oh. were meeting at like a Wawa. And and, no. and 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 Dave's like, you know, when you pull in, the chargers are to the left. And I'm like, yeah, 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 don't worry about that. I can see the chargers, you know what I mean? Like, um, it, it's not going to be hard to find the chargers. Little did I know, it was very hard to find the chargers. Anyway, that's that, that's my quick overview. Uh, I don't know if Kyle wants to add anything at this point. Yeah, no, I think uh, what we wanted to do again was to forge 
gained access to this incredible new charging network, and we wanted to put it up against what Ford owners had only a couple days before uh, we were able to record this. So it's a little bit of the past into the future, and I think uh, we learned a lot. We'll walk through our trip, of course, on Out of Spec Motoring and on Tom's State of Charge YouTube channel. We have both accounts, our trips logged, so you can. we got three hours worth of content between the two of us plus this podcast on everything. We've thoroughly covered it. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, but there's a lot more little info stuff that will come up in this podcast, of course, that didn't make it into the videos. Yeah. And what's cool right. is you're going to get to see two different perspectives of this race going down. Me, and that's Pete Bremmy, my friend Pete. Uh, he was he was my, uh, co I call him co-pilot, but he's really my pilot. You'll learn about that in the video. And uh, and as I said, Out of Spec Dave was, was Kyle's co-pilot. And we have different perspectives on the way down. You know, we stopped at different distances. You know, we, uh, we, we were, we were, we were driving side by side until the first charging stop. And, right. uh, and that's when we split. We never saw each other again until the who, finish line. Who so, stopped uh, first? Kyle. Okay. Yeah. He stopped. I was able to go about 25 miles further. on No, the first stop. it was only 14 was miles. Really? <laughs> so what, so. so. Okay. Do you remember what your first stop was? Mine was 258 miles. Did you, did you go 230 something or whatever? Yeah. Okay. I, think so. I forget. I, I, it, it didn't, it, I thought I went more than 14 miles, but we went further on the first stop for sure. Yeah, right. you did. It was, yeah. It was a whole week ago though. So practically. Yeah. yeah I was I like punch yeah. drunk from just not sleeping for, you know, 24 hours. Yeah, and the crazy almost, thing is crazy. when we drove down there, we got to the Bucky's, right? We we shot our videos and everything, and then we go inside, grab something. Eat, and Pete looks at me. The whole plan was we were gonna we were gonna go down there. We were gonna get a hotel room, spend the night, get a fresh start the next morning. And Pete looks at me. He's like, "You want to go home now?" And I was like, "Okay." So we we just drove home. Like we stayed in, we stayed in Florida for two hours and just turned around and drove. Home. We literally drove to Florida and, and drove home. So that was, that was what we did stop overnight. We, we drove about 350 miles and we stopped in South Carolina, I think, and got some rest. But um, that was just so weird to just drive to Florida. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to Jersey. So it was cool so, though. So these road trips, uh, a big part of road tripping, I guess, is, is eating. And so you had an interesting situation. Tom, you're a pizza guy from way back, right? Yeah, I owned, I owned a pizza restaurant for 30 years. Right. And so... This this picture looks like it comes from the dash of your truck. Well, there's it's, Kyle it's, in front of us. Right. So, but this, <laughs> you see him on the horizon. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. So, I, oh, I, I, sna I snagged this from Kyle's uh, Twitter feed. I, I didn't see it on yours, but yeah. So well, pizza I, sent, was I think in... I, I sent them the pizza the picture. Yeah. Okay. So pizza was involved. I don't know. Do you want to talk a little, little bit more about that? Because you know, how do you cook pizza uh, when you're yeah. driving down the highway? It, you know, you can't, you couldn't do that in the old days, right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So you know, I, I, I didn't want to just eat junk food on the way. We we couldn't stop and eat. Even our charging stops, there wasn't going to be enough time to like go in and and eat. Like you could go um, uh, to grab some quick food, like in a, a convenience store place. But I figured I was going to be stopping probably in Walmart parking lots. And I wasn't running in Walmart and waiting on line and, and then coming out. So I have this cool pizza oven. Uh, and it's actually an interesting story. I'll, I'll really quickly mention it. It's from this local restaurant called the Columbia Inn. They make this really thin crust pizza. They're famous for it. And then they also sell these ovens. And then they sell these small 12-inch pizzas where they make fresh. And then they shrink wrap them and freeze them. And they sell them to customers. One day, I come home and there's a big box at my house. And there's a pizza oven in it and a stack of pizzas, frozen pizzas with dry ice. And with a handwritten note, the manager of this restaurant was like, I've been following you for years. You've taught me so much about how to charge EVs and about electric vehicles. And you got, got me into it. And as a thank you for being a great resource for the electric vehicle community, I'm, I'm sending you this pizza oven and these, uh, and these frozen pizzas, you know, enjoy them. So, um, I, I, the next week I went there, had dinner there, met the guy, shook his hand, thank him and everything, but they're so good. I always keep a stack of them in my, my freezer because they take 10 minutes to cook. So anytime I can just in 10 minutes have like a fresh, good pizza at home. Okay. So push that to the side. So I took the pizza oven and I measured it. It barely fits on the center console of the F-150 Lightning. The Lightning has a huge center console, you know, and it, it folds open and everything. You can't fold it open while you're driving, but 
So I was afraid I was going to burn it though. So I brought this like insulation and this cookie sheet pan and sat it on it. So we, we use Ford's pro power on board, plug it in. This awesome. oven gets like 350 degrees it, and it starts smoking as soon as we plugged it in because you know, there's always like remnants of the last food you cooked, like a little crust or cheese. The whole cabin filled up with smoke and Pete's coughing and, and Pete's, Pete's like, I got to open up the window. I can't see out the window. <laughs> it was so, and as I called Kyle, I'm like, we're on fire. <laughs> the truck's on fire. And they're laughing. But, um, you know, once the, the smoke settled, you know, we cooked two pizzas, a plane and a pepperoni. So we had like proper, like good, fresh cooked pizza on the way home as nice. we're driving. And I was busting them because I saw their back seat was just chips and pretzels and all kind of just crap. You know what I mean? So I, it, we just had fun. And then we also, on one of the stops later on, Pete ran into the Walmart and bought a Keurig. So we okay, were, right, right. So, so we were making fresh coffee as we were driving. And Pete's like, I hope like the energy that we're using from the cooking pizzas and making curries doesn't cost us at the end. It didn't, but um, it was, uh, it was fun. Like we, we, we legitimately were eating like fresh food and fresh coffee and I know they weren't. So, um, you know, the, uh, if, at, if worst case scenario, we, 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 we beat them in the food category. Yeah. Well, while y'all were dealing with, you know, making food, we were taking this race seriously <laughs> and actually, you know, focusing on our charge times and our experiences. And I think let's just run through the trip really quick before yeah. we get to each thing. So just for the viewers who understand, who don't want to watch the full, you know, three hour long videos, whatever they're going to be. We should say, we should say there's a full video of this whole race on both the state of charge channel and out of spec motoring. Yeah, we already mentioned it. Where have you been? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Setting up and the yeah, like I, an I hour and a half. I saw you working in the background while I was mentioning that. I was like, Dom is not catching any of this, which I do all the time too. So uh it's yes. a challenge. Yeah, the videos will be linked, of course. And um so we left Tom's house at both roughly a hundred percent state of charge. I was at ninety nine, he was at a hundred. We did that because we figured his truck probably had some degradation, uh, and it had been sitting outside cold. My battery was warm, so we just wanted to make it a little bit fair. So mine wasn't completely topped up, but my truck was a fresh twenty twenty three. Yours a twenty twenty two. Tom, yeah, no, no difference. Miles, yeah, yeah, but but yours has a lot of DC charging, and you use the hell out of it. So yeah, um, we both stopped at points along the way that were a little bit different it's not not every version three supercharger is open and so i had to sort of space out our stops and tom could use any public charger he wanted to do i think it worked out better where he just used electrify america the whole way and there you did five stops tom five stops yep. and we did six stops i sent you our i was just trying to pull up our list on everything yeah. but um yeah, basically the the F one fifty Lightning just uh, to you know I guess to brag about it a little bit or at least to say some nice things about it. It's an amazing road tripper, um, really great flat charging curve, amazing thermal management. We never had to precondition, never had to do anything like that. It just took care of the thermals. The warmest I ever saw the battery pack get was forty two degrees Celsius. That's the hottest it ever got, which is nothing. I mean the Rivian gets up to fifty five and it's thermal derating up there. Uh, and dying. This is great thermal management on the lightnings. Um, Blue Cruise was amazing. We used hands-free driver assistance a bunch. They're just comfortable, quiet, big cabin road trippers. I mean, they're just amazing. They are not efficient. Both of us averaged 1.8 miles per kilowatt hour. It was just over a thousand miles. I think a thousand two on ours, a thousand 14 on yours, Tom. Yep. And that's yeah. the difference basically of the charger locations on and off the highway. Um, our speedometers were within uh, one tenth uh, of each other. I mean, really, really dialed in. Yeah. And so we were, we were good there. The, the overall uh, gist of it was just to give away the ending was there was six minute difference between the two on a thousand miles. So that we pulled in next to you six minutes later, but as you'll see in my video, I call it four minutes. And I, and I explain why I took two minutes back at the end of the video. So watch that. And I think a lot of people will legitimate. It's part of it's, I mean, I'll say it's about the Bucky's location. We pulled into the location four minutes after Kyle pulled in and parked next to his, it took us two hours. And I think 18 seconds to find them. 
So we were just wading through the no, parking lot. No, it didn't take you two hours to find No, no, it. two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. Yeah, I, it felt like it. At the end of the race, I'm like, I'm like, we got to get to the finish line. So it took two hours and two, uh, two, uh, two hours, two, two, two minutes. minutes and 15 seconds from right. the time I was on Bucky's property to get to Kyle. And there's two entrances. I talked to Dave. Mm -hmm. They pulled in the right entrance, right and parked. I pulled in on the other side and we were going around the gas pumps and everything. And we're like, where are they? So um, legit, they won. I mean, the four minutes is, it could be four seconds, but um, I'm calling it at four minutes, not the six minutes. Cause that, it took me six minutes to park next to him. But so like, let's talk uh, charging experiences. Um, yeah. yeah. He, here's the thing. Electrify America and all public charging. It's not just them have really earned a bad rap. I mean, people hate to go on road trips in electric cars because of the unreliability of the lines of the heavy usage of the public charging networks. Now that has been the general sentiment, but I recently went on a road trip in my Rivian and actually was like, this actually is working pretty well. And Tom, your road trip, I'd love to hear a little bit about CCS. Now I do want to preface this to the viewers. It was not planned, but we did run this through the middle of the night. We were supposed to leave at 8 AM and we left at 5 PM. My fault. Um, I just was filming stuff and we got clogged up and I wanted to get our truck to hundred percent. And we were dealing with public charging by Tom's house to get it topped up. He need, he really needs a 300 kilowatt charger in his garage it would make life so much easier. Yeah, but the, um, the 80 amp Ford charge station pro isn't enough for Kyle. Right. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> we were sitting around waiting for it. Uh, we talked to it pretty there. quickly, though. It got yeah, up there. Was, you need, you was, need DC I, power. You want that DC power. That's right. We need some some juice over there. So we got to hook this Tom thing's up great for home charging, honestly. Oh, yeah. yeah, this yeah, thing, yeah. It yeah. rocks. Absolutely. So, you know, we we basically by the time we got around to leaving and coming up with the plan and filming, it was it was years makes no difference. 445, 5 p.m., which means most of our driving was through the night when the stations were calm. They were empty. Um, but I still think it's interesting, too, because this is the best case scenario for both networks. And it shows that even though we had the same charging performance, originally, I thought that we were getting slower charging on superchargers. It turns out the trucks charge the same on superchargers. I thought Lightnings did 500 amps. They only do 450 amps. Uh, and so that's just my mistake for missing the, the numbers on that. And I was in the video. I'm like, well, Tom's getting 50 more amps than us. And it's like, no. And, and I corrected that in the video, of course. Um, but it really shows that it all came down to proximity to highway and the ability to get the truck plugged in, uh, as soon as possible. And also the optimization of everything. So can you talk about your public charging experience, Tom? Yeah. So we had five stops, uh, all at electrify America sites. I, I thought about, I, I might've been able to shave some time off if I didn't use these, these locations, if I went to non electrify America sites and I thought about it, but then I weighed that against, I know Electrify America is working right now. And I, I checked the plugs, the, the plug share reviews on the sites I was at. They like in and other reviews that the, the stations were up, they were running, they were good. And I didn't want to roll the dice going into another network and then having some kind of an issue. So I said, all right, this one might take me a little longer to get to, but I know it's going to work and I know it's going to give me the top. And the the so five stops, I I had a peak kilowatt draw of 165. 166, 167, 168, and 174 kilowatts in my five stops. So uh, I had perfect, reliable. I mean, the, the 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 lightning is great about that. It's just so dependable. If you're not getting a good charging experience, it's because of the charger. But these chargers were perfect. Every one of them, every location I plugged in, they didn't uh, take longer than normal. I mean, Electrify America takes a little while to authorize, maybe 40 seconds or 45 seconds or something. But each one was as short as it could be, it started charging and never had a blip the whole way. Perfect charging curves. Um, but the problem that I had that ultimately I think, I mean, there's three or four things I could have done that would have won or lost it. There's three or four things that Kyle could have done that would have won or lost it. I think along, along the way um, that, you know, that, if things broke differently, there would have been a different result. But the biggest problem that I had was it took me over a half an hour of combined time to get to and from the chargers on this trip, oh. uh, which is much longer than it took Kyle on his stops to, to, to get there. And um, you know, that, 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 that was a big problem. And then there was another problem one time where we pulled into, 
it was this big truck stop area and it, it wasn't directly off the highway. It was like three miles off the highway. And I got a little disoriented when I was in there. So we go to leave and then Pete's like, I'm not sure that's Google's not giving us the same way we came in. And I'm like, well, it, it knows the area better than we do. And, and we were like, well, should we try to go back the way we, we went? Maybe we'll get confused and lost, or maybe you can't get onto the highway that way. Maybe you can only get off. So we followed Google and it took us like six miles on back roads to the next exit on, on 95. And the speed limits were like 45 miles an hour. So it was like, I mean, we sped a little bit, but we didn't want to go too crazy because we're in these back towns. It could, it could be a cop just sitting in someone's driveway and mm -hmm. then we would be there for half an hour. So that added, um, I think, an additional 12 minutes on top of the normal time getting in and out. So, I mean, if we didn't make that mistake there, that there's, an, there's 12 minutes. I mean, four minutes, you know, there's so many things we could have done. So any event, that was the biggest problem I have with the Electrify America sites is the fact that they're, they're not right on the highways. Tesla does such a good job of understanding that it, it get them as close as you can to, to exactly where you get off the highway because people don't want to be driving around some town, you know, uh, you know, besides the fact that it takes longer. When you're on a, a road trip, you maybe you don't care about four or five minutes like a race, but you just don't, it's unnecessary to be driving through some back town when you could find a location right on the highway, pull off, and pull back on. So um, that was, you know, for me, every charging, all five were perfect. I, I can't say a negative thing about Electrify America except for their locations. And then I'll go back to what Kyle said about the timing. This would have been different if I was charging during the day because my locations, the first location had like 10 chargers, which was really good. After that, I think they all had four. Maybe one had five. I'm not sure. Um, and I know that. And oh, and also there was only one 350 unit at each location. And I had uh -huh. to get a 350 unit because that would have added 10 more minutes onto my stop if I didn't get that. In the first location, the big 10 site, they have two 350s. One of them's out of order. So the other one was taken. There's only like two people at the site. So when we pull up, there was a Hyundai Ionic 5 charging. And I pull up. And I walk over, I knock on the window. I'm like, if I gave you $20, would you move over to the other site? I know this is crazy, but, and they're like, oh, we'll move over for you. Don't, you don't have to pay me. But they then, you know, moseyed on out, unclicked the thing. And I'm just sitting there waiting, you know, and they <laughs> put it back in the charge port, you know, walked to their car, like took 30 seconds and then slowly backed up and drove over. And I'm like, mm, you know, but yeah, so that that added, you know, two, three minutes to my time just getting them off the spot. But I'm still positive on that stop rather than plugging into the 150 and waiting. Um, right. But then all the other stops, I was able to get the only 350 available because all the other stops, I don't I think there was only one 350. The sheets in North Carolina has two 350s, but one of them wasn't working. Was The screen was just black. So I was able to get perfect charging experiences, but. There were stations that weren't working and I was in the middle of the night where I didn't have to fight to get a plug, which if this was during the day, honestly, I think Kyle would have beat me by an hour. But Kyle had his own challenges too, right? Cause he, well, he made one extra stop more than you did as well for, for charging, even though his, his uh, Tesla superchargers were located closer to the highways. And then there was also this little clip from, uh, we saw on Twitter that I'm not exactly sure what happened here. Actually. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this, Kyle? Well, let's back up. Well, I'll walk you through my trip, but it's not all rainbows and roses in Dave's and Kyle's world. There's optimizations to be had all over the place. So, you know, where Tom maybe could have saved 15 minutes, maybe we could have saved an hour and really beat him by a lot. So, uh, I mean, I ran the truck dead. Yeah, we died on the side of the road. We had to push the damn thing. That added a lot of time. Like, there, we, we were... How much time did that take? Sorry to interrupt you, because I was curious, like... You said you were yeah. just a couple hundred feet away. Do you think yeah, that ended 15 minutes or yeah, more? Yeah, a little bit less than that. Maybe 10 minutes. Because I had like no that. idea how long you were pushing this it. Is, we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about that. Yeah, well, and um, yeah, so let, let's walk through. So the first stop we got to, we thought we were going to lose. We pretty much were like, we're done. We're hosed. Because wow. uh, if you can go to the previous post on this, Dominic, this oh, is stop okay. number two. Um, right. stop number one, we, I checked the app. It said 17 of 20 available. I'm like, Oh, we're good. Let's roll over. And you know, then 45 minutes goes by, we show up and it's full hundred percent capacity. 
and we're like, oh God, and we're pretty low. Like we can't make it because we could make it to another version three supercharger, but those weren't open to Fords. And I've actually noticed that Ford added a bunch more, or Tesla added a bunch more Ford capable chargers just this weekend after this race uh, okay. or just this week. So there's more that are available now, which is nice. But That's at least at the know. time of that recording, we couldn't divert to another charger. And a Tesla, as we're pulling in, is pulling out of the end spot. And so mm -hmm. there's an available one. If you go back one clip, uh, one photo, um, and just so this I can way? show everyone. Yeah, all the way on oh, the right geez. side. And so that's important because our charge port does not natively interface with the supercharger layout. And so you really need an extra space or you have to block two chargers in order to get the lightning to charge. And thankfully, the extra space in this case was just a curb and some grass. So we drove up on there and, you know, it took us a good five minutes, maybe even more to actually get the truck positioned. It's not an easily maneuverable vehicle. This is a big vehicle with a mm -hmm. terrible turning radius and it, we're in a tight parking lot. We actually had to go out of the parking lot, come in the different direction. And, you know, my dad is not used to it. And so he doesn't want to crash a Ford press truck. And I'm like... Right. I don't care. Do whatever you need to do to get it hooked up to a charger. You know, we'll say sorry later. It's an F-150. They make parts for these things. And, um, it, you know, in my haste of encouraging him to go as quickly as possible, he like wide open throttles this thing up onto the curb and almost takes out the supercharger. I mean, it was almost pretty bad. Um, but he saved it. I mean, I'm over exaggerating. It was, it's all on camera, but it was exciting. He had to really get on the brakes to get it to stop and it, it, that if that was our first stop that's we're like this isn't going to work because <laughs> after we plugged in you'll see there's a line that red tesla and the white tesla sat facing each other for at least five minutes just Ooh. sitting there like this i'm not moving <laughs> you move first <laughs> you know it was it was hectic and of course we're the only non-tesla there people are looking at us like can you charge like you're blocking our station what are you doing and i'm like you know in my mind, Ford gaining access to the supercharger network sounds like the saving grace. This is everything we've been waiting for. And, and here I am charging a Ford. My dad and I are like, thank God we're big dudes. Like if my mom was there, she'd be freaking out right now. Everyone's staring at us. Like, what are you doing? And um, turns out the guy that we like parked next to was just like laughing at us, but he was a viewer. He's like, of course, it's you guys who are like rocking this truck up on a curb to get it to go and um we actually met two other viewers there as well which was great and um yeah it, it worked out pretty well in the end we got it to charge and then every other stop after this through the night um we saw very minimal to no traffic at superchargers and that's where we were able to easily block stalls or use the end spot the end spot and, and have no major issues but during the day, there is the possibility that even if a supercharger is at 50% capacity and everyone leaves a space between stalls, which is what I actually saw that exact thing happen in New Jersey, we cannot get our lightning in to charge. Right. And so it sounds like Tesla now has announced they're going to come out with a supercharger extension cable that will be available for purchase. It's on their website. And uh, it's not available yet, but it will be soon. And that is something if you have a Lightning or a Mach-E, you need to get the extension cable. I don't like the idea of extension cables. I don't like the idea of adapters. It's just so much loss, so much heat, so much ability. You know, things can get damaged and danger. Uh, just, just insert danger here. But it's needed. It is. There needs to be a solution. And of course, we kept saying in the video, like version four dispensers will solve this very quickly. Yeah. Um, which will right. be very nice. So it wasn't all rainbows and roses, but our first stop was hectic. We had to curb the thing. The second stop went well. We met some viewers. The third stop, I think, is where we ran out. Tom, do you have that sheet? Where did we say a 0% arrival? I don't have your no. sheet in front of me. I'm sorry. I just have my sheet. No, it's but okay. I think so, it was the third stop. Yeah, yeah, it's the fourth stop. So Stafford, Virginia is where we went on the curb. Stony Creek, Virginia was great. Benson, Benson, North Carolina, we actually had a failure, a fault with supercharging. We had oh. the Signet Surge meets Tesla supercharger. And I've seen this once or twice before on the supercharger network, which is when the temperature sensors and the handles go, uh, we get surging power delivery. So it'll go 140 kilowatts, 30, 70, 110, 30, blah, over and Wee. over. And right. I was like, I don't really know how long that was going on for at least a few minutes before I pulled up the OBD app and realized We're good. Oh, we got a problem. And um, so I had to unplug, move the truck, plug into another one. 
And then uh, on the way to Summerton, South Carolina, the truck, we were cruising along. I knew I was cutting it close. I was you know, going to do a typical out-of-spec arrival, 0%. Um, but I've run a Lightning to Dead before, a press truck years ago when I did the range test. And I actually ran out. The only time I've ever really run out in an electric car was in a Lightning. And then it happened to me again. Um, <laughs> but, but under completely different circumstances. I look back at my range test video and the lightning shut off with uh, the OBD reading of the battery having roughly one to two kilowatt hours left in it full pack, which means they had about a three kilowatt hour or maybe a 10 or 12 mile buffer below zero, um, you know, th before the truck would shut off, which is normal. However, sometimes with electric vehicles, the the battery management system, the BMS, can become uncalibrated or sway or have issues or you could have a weak cell. And it is always risky running them to zero because especially doing 80 miles an hour, I was pulling a lot of power out of the battery. I wasn't mm -hmm. slowing down. It was under load. Um, it just shut off with two miles indicated remaining. And it still showed six kilowatt hours left in the battery. And I'm like, but the last lightning ran out when it showed two kilowatt hours left. And I assumed because this was a new truck, the BMS would be okay but i again we don't know what happens to these things before they get to us it could have been sitting and it just lost calibration we charged it to 99 percent at tom's house not a hundred to let it calibrate and top balance um and so it's it's really on us for not calibrating the truck um but it did shut off with two miles of range remaining and i had enough momentum to coast off the highway off the exit blow through a stop sign it was middle you know, it was 3 a.m in south carolina um and no one was around and I made it almost up the crest to cross the highway before it just stopped. And so then you made your dad push. Is that what happened? Well, there? He, and, he and I both pushed it. Uh, okay. we, both, you know, we, we needed that's two good. people to get this thing. Yeah, moving. That's a big truck. Right. Yeah. And, and it's on an uphill and we were like, we, we have to, this is our only option. And we pushed it up the hill. Once it started moving, I jumped in to steer it. He gave us the final, you know, few feet of push up the hill. And, um, then we crested and I got the speed on and, you know, basically uh, coasted right into the supercharger. It stopped right when I pulled up to the charger, plugged it in, charged right away. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Yeah, it so. was. We were pushing it. And then the next two charging stops after that were very, very easy. There's Pooler, Georgia here on the screen. The sun yep. just coming up. Looks nice. Yeah, it was a beautiful site. Very nice. And then we went to Yuli. Uh, we could have done, uh, we charged to, I think, 80% and Pooler. And we know we needed, uh, we knew we needed just a quick top up to make it to Bucky's. Um, we, again, probably could have charged to 85% and made it there if we just drove slow. But um, no, we said, let's go rip it. And we did a 10 minute stop up, uh, top up in Yuli. And that's actually, there were more chargers we could have made it to past then. But with the Lightning, uh, because you'll get 450 amps for 10 minutes, you actually want that at the highest pack voltage possible. So we pulled in there at 30% state of charge or so and got a really nice boost at around 165-ish kilowatts, maybe even a bit more. And uh, then just, just charged to 50% so we can make it to Bucky's at, uh, yeah, I think, 4 or 5% we ended with. Wow. Which is what yeah. I ended. I ended at 5%. So, um, and uh, my last charging stop too, I was deciding how I, I charged to 80% on all the stops, but on the last stop, I know I didn't need 80%. And my initial instinct was to charge at to 70% because we had to go, uh, hundred and, uh, geez, 158 miles. I think it was from the, the last, uh, to the last stop. And, uh, so I'm thinking 70% will probably do it, but then I'm, I'm, I'm saying, well, you know, we're going to want to drive the 10 over the whole way on this last leg. And, and the whole thing was Kyle. So Kyle had to make a stop after we did. All right. So um, I get to the charging. Kyle's behind me now at this point. And as, as he's, tw I think, 40 miles behind me. Um, and, and I pull into the last stop, but I'm at a low state of charge. I'm at 18%. So now I need to go up to, um, my decision is where do I stop? 70%, 75%. I know I don't have to go to 80, but I need at least 70. So now as we're charging, Kyle passes us. Now he's in the lead, but I know he has to stop one once more, but I don't know what his state of charge is at this point. And we, so now we stop following each other because we were following each other the whole time. I don't know where he is. I don't know what his state of charge is, but I know he's got to pull in charge to 
I, I told Pete, I think he's probably got to charge to 50%. And I was perfectly right. And that was a guess. But um, but I was like, we just have to get to his exit before he pulls out. Because if we're ahead of him at the exit, we've won. Because we 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 just we can both limit our driving. We can't speed, you know, and 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 at that point, like it, you know, I, I would even call him and say, just give up. Like, let's not let's not have an accident because I'm ahead of you before you're you, you, you know the exit. And um if I saw him, let's say I'm there and I see him like five cars behind me, I'm like, you know, okay, you know, that's it. But um, so I'm 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 gonna pull out at 70%. And I'm doing the math and I'm like, we can make it, but I don't know if we can drive 80 miles an hour the whole way at 70%. We might just run out. So I'm like, I'm going to leave it till 75%. So um, we, 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 we get to 75% and I'm like, I'm going to wait till 76. <laughs> so I charge a 76 and then I unplug it and we head. It turns out that decision cost us because if I would have unplugged at 70%, because we arrived with 5% state of charge. If I would have mm -hmm. unplugged at 70%, I would have been pulling in on fumes but we would have beat him because that, that extra, um, it, I think it was seven minutes more that I waited. So we would have just edged him. So that last decision I made cost the race. Wow. That's a pretty amazing result actually to be that close, even with just completely different networks and location, charging locations and thousand miles. Right. Well, and so much four can minute go. difference. <laughs> you know, like, ah, so. it's six minute difference. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, but, I think uh, we we summarized it pretty well, I think, at the end, which is like, you know, a, a, two days before we had shot this road trip or three days before we had shot this road trip, you Ford owners only had one option to get to Florida, and it was Tom's route. And just in a couple of days, we have completely doubled the amount of options or more to get your truck to Florida. And your third option is you can intermix them. You go to whichever one's faster right off the highway, has the amenities you want, has the price structure that you want. And uh, it really is the next era of charging, which is both are equal under perfect circumstances. Let's just say um, now it's you can pick and choose based off traffic amenity. And no one has had that ability uh, really, truly to do that up until now. Yeah. And this in, is good for America, the whole industry. Yeah. This is, oh, yeah. you know, this is the way it should be. Everyone should be able to charge everywhere. You know, and and uh, and then you know you choose the network that that you find more reliable or has better convenience items there. You know, a store, better restrooms or whatever. But the fact that we're finally going to get to that, it's going to take five, six, seven years for really for everything to coalesce. And and uh, you know, there's going to be some issues uh, in this transition. But um, you know, it's 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 great. And I give Jim Farley the credit. And by the way, a, a shameless plug here: I interviewed Jim Farley one on one a couple of days ago. Or last week, actually, that my video is going to come up this week. I'm going to, uh, it's ready, but I, I want to do the race to Vegas video first. And then a couple of days later, I'm going to put that up. And I really talked to Jim about this. And I, I kind of um, stroke him a little bit and say, you know, I just got to sit here and tell you person to person that, you know, uh, thank you for doing this because, you know, somebody had to put their foot down to do it. And, and, and you're the one that did it. You know, yeah. you, we knew that you were going to get some pushback from the industry that people were going to say you were capitulating to Elon and you were bowing at the throne of Tesla. You, 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 but you know that that's been said and you know, that. Uh, um, but, but somebody had to have, I'll say it, the balls to come out and say, our shit isn't good. Their shit is better. And I want their shit. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, 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 and he's the one that did it. So he changed you know, history. Yeah. And, history, and he, he's, history has changed. That, that's going to make the CCS networks better. It's going to force mm -hmm. them to be better. If mm -hmm. the, if those networks don't improve, nobody's going to go to them. And right. and Tesla will just keep installing more and more superchargers, and they'll own the industry, the the you know the energy distribution industry. So this is going to force the other networks to be better. So it's it's just good all the way around. Right. All right. Anything else we want to tie up real quick? Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of this show. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the uh, uh, in the comments or on the social media platform of your choice. Don't forget, if you like the show, please give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, tap bell, that bell icon for notifications. And yeah, thanks you very much for joining us, and we'll see you again very soon. Ciao.